Ah, gotta love some good intro music. Hi there and welcome to Creatively Me with Brie. And you guessed it, I'm Brie. So today I wanted to go over how I made this piece called Cat Therapy. Um, It's a piece I made in tribute to my cat because my cat has helped me through so much in my life, 14 years together and still going. This image that you see here, I got off of Upsplash, which is a photo stock website that produces free images for your use, royalty-free images. Please make sure before you do decide to use anything off of these types of websites that you read carefully over the licensing information. I wanted to have a silhouette of a black cat, and so I took an image that I thought had really good shape to it and I took some small creative liberties and created a design that I felt was a good, simplistic, very readable cat, essentially. When you choose images and if you do intend on turning them into a silhouette piece, make sure that it reads well in its simplicity. Um, I believe this piece, like I said, read well in its simplicity. And so in a moment, you'll see uh, when I fill it in that it very easily is identifiable as a black cat that's sitting on its side or maybe not sitting on its side. It's a side profile. Okay. Anticipate some bloopers issues throughout the rest of this video. I am getting over being sick. I had laryngitis and while I do have my voice back, my vocal cords are still very exhausted. So with that being said, let's get back to the piece, okay? So on different layers, I will be adding floral elements. You can already see that I'm doing that thus far. The brush that I use is actually under calligraphy brushes in the brush library in Procreate, and I use the monoline brush. I think that it creates just really nice, clean, simple lines. Majority of the floral elements that you will see that I make, I also keep simplistic to keep in line stylistic-wise with the uh, silhouette effect. There will be a few Um, like this one that you'll see where there is a secondary color, but again, it's simple. And this is just your regular video reminder to make a sketch before you proceed with your piece. In case you guys didn't notice, I didn't have a sketch prepared. If I'm being honest, I should have. I spent some time that did get edited out of this video Um, just trying to figure out placement and trying to figure out what colors fit well together and next to one another. So definitely I encourage you make the sketch, do the sketch. Don't be like me, be better, do better. An additional tip is make sure that you have or create a limited color palette. Um, if you want to know more about my limited color palette, just let me know and I can make a video on that. Um, I'll be honest, I actually learned about this from another artist. It really helped me understand color theory on a whole new level. Um, I took color theory in college, continued to practice it throughout all of my art career. However, um, I didn't realize that one of the things that was overcomplicating my pieces was the fact that I did not create helpful limitations in what I was doing. I had just too open-ended of a color palette that sometimes I picked colors that really didn't fit well in my piece. And if I'm being honest, I do tend to pick colors that are less saturated and more on the muddier side. And so it really helps me to have my color palette selected ahead of time. Um, And very seldomly do I deviate off of that pre-selected Uh, color palette of each piece that I work on. Brief background um, about this piece. Um, I'm a survivor of abuse and trauma, and I've had the same cat for 14 years, and she's been with me through a lot. And in some ways, she was more supportive than some of the very real people I had in my life. Apparently, animals have shown that they decrease levels of cortisol, which is a stress hormone, and they can help lower blood pressure. Um, Other studies have found that animals reduce loneliness, uh, increase feelings of social support, which was what I was talking about, and can boost your mood. 
I know that a lot of animals can also help with depression and anxiety and um, other mental health issues. I know that my cat dragon has been with me through so much and has helped support me in ways that she literally can't comprehend. And back to this art piece, I just want to highlight once again, um, some of this I had to create several times over. I had to edit this video down because, well, I'm not perfect. Go figure. Um, but I definitely had to sort of play around with the different types of designs and, and elements and see how they all moved together and worked together. Um, I did have a few elements in there that just simply didn't feel like they were part of this collection of elements, if you will. It just felt like a different style. This is, again, why I stress, make sure that you plan, prepare, and sketch ahead of time. Don't be like me. Don't do it. It's not worth it. However, I do feel like this piece ended up very cohesive by the end. Um, I might be a little biased, but I do think it comes together well in the end. Um, and I probably could have saved myself, you know, a lot of time. But, you know, live and you learn. Uh, in my case, I live, I make the mistake, I don't necessarily learn, and then I repeat. Um, but eventually I do learn. Um, I'll let you guys know when I do do that. I, uh, I'll let you know. So actually, I think I just figured out the best way to describe what kind of artist I am. So, you know, novelists, there's two different types of categories that most novelists fall into. Um, it's either planners or pantsers. Planners are those who develop outlines before they begin writing um, and those who don't and um, are, are less organized, if you will, to just kind of go with the flow are pantsers. Yeah, I would say that's my style of art. I really want to be a planner. In theory, that's what I want. In practice, that's not what I am. And if you're anything like me and you are wondering, where did they get the term pantser from? I had to look it up. Apparently, the term came from the phrase, by the seat of your pants. So, the more you know. And one of my videos would not be complete without some awkward silence. Because what does one say when you've said it all? Yup. It's happening. Oh my goodness, can y'all hear my kids downstairs? They are not getting along right now. Thank goodness, their daddy is on it. And I'm getting pretty dang close to being done. I'm just going to add a few little details here and there, move some stuff around get it all situated, balanced, if you will, balanced in its, it's not, is it's in its asymmetry. I was going to say, it's not symmetry. It's not symmetry I'm after. It was the asymmetry. And I'm going to add in the text that makes this please, that makes this piece complete. I am almost done. And then I'm going to voice this, <laughs> rest this voice. Oh my gosh, I can't speak. And um, yeah, if you're interested in this uh, piece and you want to know, you know, more of what my work looks like, feel free to check out the links down below in the description. I have Redbubble, Society6, my YouTube channel, TikTok, you know, all the platforms, all the things, all the buttons that lead to different places. All fun things, though. Well, this has been fun. If you're still here, thank you for listening to this awkward commentary. And please don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. And I'll see you guys real soon. 